Okay, so we have finished the installation of our rear view and our side cameras. We could actually show you the cameras and I wanted to show the pairing of a camera. So what I'm gonna do is um, take the focus off of me. We're going to tilt this around and you will notice, actually we'll do this, uh, you'll notice the monitor here and I hope you can see that okay. We've got a nice clear backup camera. Now the camera is adjustable in the angle view. So if you're planning to use it more for traveling down the road, you can tilt the camera up to see further back. You can tilt it down to see the back of the trailer. Now I've kind of done a combination of this there is still move, more movement downwards. It will tilt enough that I've already um, checked this, that I can actually see the bumper, the I-beam frame, and the back wall. It will tilt that close to your unit because F Furion or Lippert doesn't know, you know how far out does your bumper stick. So they really have a great adjustment. It also tilts way up if you want to be able to see much further back, but then you lose your bumper along the way. So I've set it, and this is the way I used to like to travel in my motorhomes, is that I could just see, uh, in the motorhome I would do it so I could see that hitch that I would use for a tow dolly. So here, you can see in the center right here, that's, that's our spare tire, and just in the corner here, you'll notice that's our rear ladder. And that's really what I wanna be able to see. I wanna see before I make impact with that rear ladder, or before I get to the point of my spare tire. And that's because my spare tire sticks out from my rear bumper. So if I can stop before it reaches those outer points and does any damage, we're in, in great shape. You'll notice the backup lines to give you an idea of how close you're getting. And what's really nice is you tap the monitor once and you can go over to other screens. So for example, I just tapped the right camera. I've already paired the right camera and that's along the side, nice wide view. You can see that there's a parking space next to us, plus an entire aisleway. So realistically going down the road, this should be able to capture two lanes of traffic next to us. Again, tap the screen. If we went to our left camera, there's nothing, because we're going to pair that while we're actually uh, filming this and then of course if you do a double tap click the view all you have a couple of different camera settings my preference is the tri view um, my understanding from the system i haven't tested it yet but my understanding from this system is that the tri view will allow you to go down the road with all three cameras being viewed if you go with the quad view, it will not. And, um, and then you can just tap the one that you want to see your main picture. Uh, the quad view cannot be used while you're uh, driving down the road. And most times you're probably going to want to use either the tri or the side views. Uh, one thing we will test and, and bring to you in a later video is um, the motion sensitivity. There is the ability to set that the cameras pick up on motion. So what I'd like to see is those side cameras being set to motion and as cars approach you while you're driving, will it actually switch over to that camera automatically is my understanding. So we may bring you some filming as we go out on a couple of trips as the weather continues to get warmer and bring you some real life experience with it. Um, but now let's pair our final camera because when you buy the kit um, or as you buy the kit as I did where I bought the rear camera and the monitor as a kit and then the side cameras as add-on, 
your rear camera is going to be paired with the monitor and then you need to pair the additional cameras. And this is also going to be true if you purchase the door camera because this system will allow four cameras. So it's very easy to do. What we do here is we hit our main menu button on the side, we go to pairing, and then we're going to go to our left camera. And what I'm gonna do is set the camera down. It is now searching and we go hit the little button on the camera. On the camera, we hit the little pairing button. And now let's go back. We'll go back again. And there we have, let's bring this down the, sorry, the light. It's a, turned out to be a nice sunny day and it's just interfering a bit with our camera. There's our left camera now paired. So there's a little pairing button under each camera. If you ever lost connectivity, you ever had to replace the camera itself, you could very quickly and easily repair them. Uh, if you had a damaged monitor, you could repair it nice and easy. So let's go to the view all. So in the view all now we have set up, top camera is our backup, and then left camera two is our left, camera three is our right. Now we haven't set some of the modes, you'll be able to set and default which camera you prefer to see all the time. But that gives you uh, a nice quick breakdown of the installation of the cameras and then the pairing. And um, it's a nice, easy setup. Remember that these cameras with the instructions that are given are set to be run off of the trailer when you're driving down the road with your driving lights on. Your marker lights need power to them in order to operate these cameras. So if you want to have your cameras have the ability to always be on, you're gonna need to run a separate power cable. And that's gonna be true if you're gonna use them as observation cameras when you're in a campground unhooked from your truck you would need to run a power cable to each of the camera locations rather than drawing power from your marker lights. Um, be cautious, they do call in the instructions if you do that for an inline fuse, so you wanna make sure that you do, do that right. For our purposes, and I think for the majority of people, powering them off your marker lights is going to be more than enough. Uh, because what we could try, so for example, I've just turned power off on the truck. I'm going to open the door and close the door. And what should happen in a few moments is because we're plugged in to the trailer is plugged into the truck, we should see this camera go off because most new vehicles now you exit and your lighting stays on, your marker lights stay on and your headlights or daytime running lights stay on for a short spell. And then what happens is that power will go out. And so just as I'm playing around with the cameras, you'll see they're pretty quick to respond on the monitor. Now, the reason I haven't run full power to them is that if I'm in a Walmart parking lot, most vehicles today, if you hit your lock or your unlock button, all your marker lights and your daytime running lights turn on. And, oh, sorry, I'm waiting for that to go off and I just realized I had my marker lights turned on. So, for example, the truck is now off as if we were parked and you can see that the screen has gone dark. So if we hit, let's try hitting our lock button on our key fob and no reaction. Let's hit our unlock. Nope. Now if we hit lock and auto start,
there we go. Okay, so that that's in, uh, that's an interesting combination. I wasn't sure, I thought I'd do this live. I wasn't sure that if you were parked in a parking lot and happened to hit your lock or your unlock button, which typically activates parking lights for that instant, would the camera come live? Now, it actually didn't. However, when we use the auto start feature that most vehicles have, it does power the system. So that, that's a nice little fact. You could be sitting in a Walmart, hear some noise, take this monitor into your RV, plug it into the 12 volt, and if you hear some noise, hit your auto start feature and the camera will come live. Also, auto start on the trucks is great that if you're not traveling with a generator and your batteries are getting a little low while you're camping or before you go to bed, hit your auto start and as the truck runs, the alternator of course will put charge to the battery on the trailer. So just a couple little notes if you're thinking about a camera system and how it might function for you. Um, I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing here. There's going to be some playing around with some of the uh, settings in the truck itself and there we've turned the auto start off and the uh, we've turned the auto start off and this way you know it it killed power to the unit so um, a couple of little features and some settings that need some little adjustments you may want to play around with with the brightness uh, there is a volume on the rear camera as well because there's a microphone so when you're backing up if somebody is providing an extra eye and some guidance you'll um, be able to hear them and as you go down the road there is a mute button and you'll just see that right in here we can turn it on and we can actually hear the road noise of the highway behind us or we can just mute it out so nice little feature um, if you're in the market for a backup camera system with the flexibility to go with side views I'm uh, pretty impressed at what I'm seeing here first we'll see what it's like traveling down the road we'll do a future video to give you some comments once we're out on the road more regularly as the weather's changing as you can see the snow has melted behind us we've had a, a week or so of really nice weather that has gotten rid of the snow pretty quickly uh, and the the graphics from the camera on the monitor are pretty good because you can actually see the gravel here behind us so if you're in the market take a look at Furion uh, Vision S camera system nice easy install and a pretty good value for your money they're not super expensive they're not cheap but they're not super expensive and I think they'll be worth every penny uh, anyways, if you like the video, please click the like button. We are trying to reach 10,000 subscribers, so please feel free to subscribe. If you hit the little bell below, you'll be notified of new videos that come up on great products for RVs as well as lifestyle in general. And check back soon. We have more reviews coming as well as automotive reviews. Uh, please feel free to tell your friends about the channel and I'd like to say thank you. I look forward to any comments you have and any suggestions on videos that you would like to see. Well, Bruno from RVing TV, thank you for viewing the video. Make sure that you live life to its fullest and enjoy every day. Take care.